Hello again and welcome to another Bolt Action Starter Army review video and today guys we're going to be taking a look at the Axis faction that certainly had the most style and the best food. That's right, it's time to take a look at the all new Italian starter armies that have just been announced by Warlord Games. So I've got a special treat for you guys here today. I'm going to be reviewing two starter armies in one video. That's right, I'm going to be taking a look at both the Blackshirt and the Bersagliari starter armies today. Now, if this is the first time that you're catching one of these videos, then how I normally do it is I take a look at the contents of each box. What exactly do you get in these starter sets so you know exactly what you're buying if you decide to pick one of these up. I then do a deeper dive on the kits themselves. Are they modern kits? Are they some of the older ones that Warlord does? What weapon options? do you get and then we're going to compare it to some other starter armies now normally i would compare like a german starter set to other german starter sets but as the italians have actually got a relatively limited amount of starter arms in fact these two are the first two italian starter arms that warlords have released what i'm going to be doing is comparing it to one of the german starter armies of a similar price point which is going to be the german africa core so that's what's going to be contained in this video and now let's crack on with it so the first of these starter sets that we're going to take a look at is the Italian Army and Blackshirt starter set. So exactly what you get in this kit is 36 highly customizable plastic Italian infantry. You're also getting to get a plastic M13 slash 40 medium tank and this can be built into the Semaventi 75 slash 18. So to be absolutely clear guys, even though on the picture it looks like it comes with two tanks, it's not. It's going to come with one vehicle and you get to pick whether you want it to be the tank or you want it to be the assault gun. So just be clear about that when you're buying it. I wouldn't want anyone to open this set up and think, where's my second tank? it's one tank and you get to pick how it is built you then get four metal hq figures you get an officer with a pistol an officer with an smg a medic and a radio operator you're going to get a metal mmg team always great to see an mmg team in these starter sets you're going to get a medium mortar team and you're going to get a 47 millimeter anti-tank gun so that's exactly what you're going to get you get 36 plastic inventory Four metal infantry for your officers, three metal support teams, that's the MMG, the mortar, and the anti-tank gun, and then you're going to get one plastic tank that you can build in two different varieties. So overall, I really like the units that Warlords has included in this starter set. I think that the 36 plastic infantry is a solid core. There are a lot of armies out there where you won't need more than 30 to 40 infantry to play your standard thousand point game bot action. And so it's really good that Warlord Games are going, look, here's all the infantry that you're going to need. And if you want to get any more, it's probably just going to be to bulk out your forces for some larger games or give yourself some unit variety or weapon variety within those units. And I think the weapon teams that are included in this starter army are really good as well. They're going to cover a lot of bases for newer players. You've got that medium machine gun. It's not the most competitive unit, but a starter army just never feels right if it's not packing a medium machine gun. And it's still a good unit to lock down a flank with. You've got that all-important medium mortar. You guys know I have a big hard-on for medium mortars. I just think they're such an auto-include. And any starter army that has a medium mortar in it is definitely heading in the right direction. And you also get a little bit of anti-tank. Now, to be clear, this anti-tank gun is not a medium or heavy anti-tank gun like we've seen in other faction star armies. This is actually a light anti-tank gun. Yes, that means it is going to lack a little bit of a punch against some of those heavier tanks. But to get you started with, you can't go wrong with having a cheeky little light anti-tank gun. And it will still supplement some of the anti-tank that you're going to have in your force. Likewise, those four metal officers are actually quite a big deal. Because that means you don't need to convert any of your plastic infantry into officers. You've got all the plastic line infantry you're going to need and then you've got your officer models as well it's just really good and last but certainly not least you've got that plastic tank it is a shame that it doesn't come with two tanks but then i think the starter set would be a little bit more expensive if it came with two tanks at the end of the day it has come with a bit of proper armor and if you guys watch my other starter sets you know that i think every starter set should include at least one bit of proper armor and that's just some kind of just main tank it doesn't need to be a medium or heavy or anything like that. it just has to be a main tank and that's what this starter set has got so overall before we even dived into the kits themselves i just think that the unit composition for 
for the starter set is really good. And anyone that picks this up is going to be able to quickly put together an effective force of Italians. And that is, that's what you're looking for in a starter set. You want something that you can pick up, put together and start playing games with right away. And that's what this set effectively achieves. So now that we've looked at the starter set as a whole, let's do a bit more of a deeper dive into the individual kits that you get. And let's start off with that plastic Italian infantry. First off, it's great that we've now got plastic Italian infantry for a long time. You could only get metal models. and That really was a barrier to the faction. Interestingly, I've seen a lot more people interested in the Italians. And I think that's what Warlord are responding to with this starter set. People want plastic Italian kits and Warlord are now providing that. Now, these plastic infantry are some of the latest ones developed and produced produced by Warlock Games and that's really important to note. The mold lines on these kits are going to be really subtle. The quality of the sculpts, the faces, the poses, all that kind of good stuff is going to be top notch because these are some of the best kits that Warlock Games has produced. So in terms of quality you're going to have no issue with these kits and they come with loads of extra parts and bits to really customize your infantry and make them feel like your dudes. Now there's a slight drawback on the kit which is that the weapon loadouts are kind of limited. In fact per six man sprue you only get two LMGs and a single SMG. When you compare that to some of the German starter sets where you're getting two LMGs, two Panzerfaust, two SMGs, three STGs and then a boatload load of rifles on top of that as well. But I guess that's kind of just the nature of choosing to collect the Italians rather than the Germans. Not every faction is going to have access to all the best gear. And I think if you're a more experienced player who's choosing to get into the Italians for the first time or you're looking at the Italians over the Germans, more likely than not, you're probably going to get the Italians because you think they're cool and you're not too worried about what the weapon loadouts are going to be. Now, moving on from the plastic infantry, we have the metal models in this starter set, and that is the support teams and the officers. Now, when it comes to the officer models, these are going to be really simple to put together. Most of the time, they are going to be single piece metal models. You stick them straight on the base and off you go. The support teams are going to require some assembly. Most of the crew are going to be single piece metal models. That, again, you can just fix straight onto the base, but the weapons are more than likely going to require some assembly, such as putting the machine gun on the tripod, and putting the mortar on the bipod and so on and so forth. The one thing I would say with metal models is if this is your first time interacting with them, please be careful when it comes to chipping the paint off them. Metal models tend to have a really bad habit of if you drop them or knock them or even just start picking them up and wear and tear, the paint does tend to chip off them. So if you've not used to do the metal models, don't worry, they can have the same base coat, they can use all the same paints, but once you've finished painting them and gluing them and all that kind of good stuff, make sure you give them a spray with a nice matte varnish and that should help stop the paint from chipping off those metal models. Now moving on from the plastic and metal infantry let's take a look at that plastic tank and it's an important thing to mention that it is a plastic tank because the old M1340 used to be supplied by Warlord Games as a resin vehicle so it's really good to see that they've now made it into a plastic vehicle just so much nicer and easier to put together. Now a couple of things that I did notice whilst taking a look at the sprues. Firstly the track Track assembly is what I would call the old style of track assembly. Warlord has produced some vehicles where the tracks are all one bit and the tracks and the wheels are all together and you can just stick them straight on the side of the tank like they did that with the Bren carrier, they did that with the uh, Stuart tank as well but for this tank it looks like it's the older style where you've got the wheels and everything separate and then you've got to put the top of the track and the bottom of the track on the vehicle. That's just something you're going to want to be aware of because you are going to have to be able to line those two bits of track up and if you look at my old Sherman for example sometimes that can be a little bit more difficult than it sounds so just be aware of that when you're building this vehicle. Another little thing I just want to mention, just a slight drawback, and I could be wrong on this, as I haven't built one of these myself, so please, if you know better, let me know down in the comment section below. But by looking at the sprues online, it certainly seems that you are going to have to pick which one of these tanks you're going to want to build, and that unless you are an absolute wizard with magnets, it is probably going to be quite difficult to be able to build this vehicle in such a way where one game you can swap out the casemate for the main turret and you can use it as one game as the medium tank and one game as the assault gun. So just something you're going to want to be aware of. And when it comes to picking which one of these vehicles you're going to want to build, which one you want to support your army, it's kind of going to come down to you. 
Now, I have had a quick gander at the rules for these two vehicles, so I'm going to give you a quick summary to try and help you decide which one you might want to build for your army. The M13-40 is described as a medium tank on the box, but when it comes to the rules, it is actually a light tank, so be aware of that. It hasn't got the heaviest armour. It also hasn't got the best big gun either. In fact, it only comes with a light anti-tank gun. Now, this light anti-tank gun combined with the light anti-tank gun that comes with this starter army, you may find that you have just enough anti-tank to squeak by. The main reason you'd be interested in the M13-40 is actually it can take a lot of machine guns. This single vehicle, if you take all the machine guns that are available to it, can get four medium machine guns, which makes it an absolute bullet hose. So to me, the M1314 seems more like of a machine gun bully tank than an actual main battle tank. Now, the Semavente actually comes with medium armor, so it is tougher, and it does come with a medium anti-tank gun as well. But that's all it comes with, unless you are willing to pay points for an extra machine gun. So that's something you're going to want to be aware of. Basically, do you want to have a tank that can bully infantry and maybe just maybe squeak you by with enough anti-tank? Go for the M1340. If you want something that you know is actually going to be able to put a hole in enemy armor and is actually going to be a bit more durable, then you should go for the Semavente Assault Gun. It's entirely up to you which one you build, but those are kind of the main battlefield roles for both of these vehicles. But that covers the Italian black shirts. Now let's take a look at the Bersagliari, which are the more elite veteran troops of the Italian forces. What do you get in this start army? Well, it's actually very similar to what you get in the black shirts. You're going to get 36 plastic infantry. You're going to get three weapon teams. You're going to get four metal officers and you're going to get one tank, which can be built as either the M1340 or the Semavente assault gun. However, there are just a few things that I'd like to point out that make this starter set very interesting. Firstly, as far as I can tell, and please tell me if I'm wrong about this, but this is going to be the only way you can get yourself plastic Bersagliari until a separate box set comes out. Right now, there is no separate box set being sold by Warlord Games for plastic Italian Bersagliari. So if you want the marksman of the Italian forces in World War II, you want that veteran infantry, this is the place to go. Now, Warlord Games has sold Bersagliari in metal models before, but this is the first time that you can get your hands on them as plastic. And something that I want to point out, and I again, let me know what you guys think, but from looking at the two pictures, I think that the models that you get for the Bersagliari are distinctly different to those that you get for the Italian black shirts. I don't think this is the same sprue with a different head swap. I think they have actually given them the distinctive uniforms of the Bersagliari. So that's really, really cool that you actually get a distinct infantry box set to represent the elite troops of the Italians. And that is another thing to be aware of. The Bersaglia army on the tabletop are counted as veteran infantry. That means they cost more points. Now, one way of looking at that is technically you get more points for your money if you go for the Italian Bersagliari. But the other way of looking at it is what is your play style going to be? Do you want to play as the hordes of the black shirts, the inexperienced infantry? Do you want to play as the regular Italian armed forces? Then you probably need to go for the army and black shirt star army. Do you want to play a more elite Italian Italian force that's going to be able to hold the line a little bit better but there isn't going to be as many of them and then you probably want to consider the Bersagliari. Now one of the biggest differences between these two starter armies is in the support teams. You see the Italian Bersaglia army do not come with that light anti-tank gun. Instead they come with a Breda 20mm light automatic cannon, an AA gun. This is really interesting. I have never seen a bolt action starter army include an AA gun. Now don't worry about it if you're new to bolt action. That doesn't mean it can only shoot down planes. It's very good at shooting down light infantry and light vehicles as well but the big thing is is that it means that you don't have an infantry based source of anti-tank so if it was me and i was picking up the bersagliari i'd probably be like okay i'll take my breda 20 millimeter anti-aircraft gun but when it comes to what i'm going to build my tank as i'm probably almost definitely going to build it as a semavente because if i don't i literally have no decent anti-tank in my army if i'm the black shirts i'd probably consider getting away with going for the m13-40 and being like i got two sources of light anti-tank that'll probably see me through most most games. So that's a key difference you're going to want to be aware of. If you pick up that Bersagliari, you get a very, very cool 20mm anti-aircraft gun, but you almost certainly are going to want to build that tank as the Semavente to make sure you've actually got some way of dealing with enemy armour. 
One other small detail that I'd like to point out is that the four Metal HQ models that you get for each starter army are distinctly different from each other. And that's a really nice touch because it makes both of the armies feel unique. So that covers all of the Italian starter armies, but how do these two new sets compare against a German starter army that costs a similar amount? So we're going to take a look at the Africa Corps starter army. Now, first thing to mention is price. The Italian armies are both coming in at £90. Now, that is actually slightly less than many other starter armies that you'll find. A lot of the bigger starter sets that you find, which include two vehicles, are about £106 if you get them from Warlord Games. Like I said, the Italian ones are 90 However, However, the Germans have a starter army for the Africa Corps, which is £89, basically the same cost, and it comes with some very similar units. So, for example, the German and the Italian starter sets come with 36 plastic infantry. Great. The Africa Corps comes with three support teams. You get the Flak ATA, you get a medium mortar, you get a medium machine gun. That's great. The Italian ones also come with three support teams. And then the German starter set comes with a Panzer III and the Italian starter sets come with a medium tank as well. So... Where's the difference? Well, the key thing comes down to those support teams, right? The Flak AA is an absolute beast of an anti-tank weapon. Whereas if you look at on the Italian side, you're either getting a light anti-tank gun or you're getting a Breda 20mm anti-aircraft gun. So the anti-tank is certainly in the favor of the German starter set. However, key little thing to note is that the Italian starter army comes with those four metal HQ choices. So technically it comes with four more infantry, which actually is, you know, not something to be scoffed at, not something to be overlooked. It means that you can build all of your plastic infantry as line infantry. You don't need to water them down by building some of them as officers and other HQ choices. So whilst you might not be getting as much anti-tank as the Africa Corps starter army, you are actually going to be getting a little bit more army of variety and unit flexibility, which is definitely a big plus in my mind. So in summary, if I had to pick between the Africa Corps starter army or one of the Italian star sets, it would entirely come down to which faction I want to collect. Both of these box sets are going to give you an effective force that you can build and use on the tabletop straight away. And that really is the number one goal of a starter army in my mind. And overall, I think all of the Italian star sets have effectively achieved that. And that's all we've got time for today. If you've enjoyed today's video, please consider giving it a like. And if you want to see more stuff like this, then consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, I'd be really interested to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on these new Italian starter armies and the Italians in bow action in general? Now, if you're considering getting into bolt action and you want to pick up some star sets, then please consider using my affiliate link for Element Games down in the description below. By using that link, you can get between 10 and 25% off all of your wargaming needs. And the best bit is that Element Games gives me a little bit of a finder's fee for pointing you in their direction. It costs you no more. You get the discounts, I get a bit of a finder's fee, and Element Games get a customer that they wouldn't normally get. So it's a win-win-win for everyone, and it's just a great way of you helping to support the channel. And as an added bonus, if you get to check out and use the referral code TIM3921, and you can find that in the description of this video, then you will actually earn yourself double store credit for your next purchase with Element Games, which means in the long run, you're going to make even more savings. So it's just a great way for you to support the channel and for you to save money on your hobby as well. But that's everything we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.